Today we are going to start the muscles of anterior abdominal wall. So mainly you have uh, three muscles which are flat muscles. You can see here this is the external oblique muscle. It's a flat muscle. And next you have an internal oblique muscle. And this is also a flat muscle. And third comes a transverse abdominus. So you can see here this is transverse abdominus. So if you see these three muscles, they are looking like alike. Uh, they are like uh, flat muscles. So let us differentiate them from one another by means of the nerve supply actions and origin in session everything so first we'll start with external oblique muscle as you can see in this diagram so this muscle mainly arises by eight fleshy slips uh, as you can see here eight fleshy slips from middle of shaft of lower eight ribs and the fibers run downwards forwards and medially so the insertion is most of these fibers of muscle end in a broad aponeurosis so actually they form aponeurosis and they end there okay uh, through which they are inserted from above downwards into the skiffy process first okay next linear alba and next comes the pubic symphysis below and also to the pubic crest and pectineal line of pubis so like this they will have their insertion so origin is from lower atrix insertion into the uh, skiffy process linear alba and also to the pubic symphysis pubic crest and pectineal line so what is the nerve supply and also one more thing the lower fibers of uh, muscle are inserted directly into anterior two thirds of outer lip of iliac crest you can see lower two thirds is directly attached to the iliac crest here so what is the nerve supply actually this external oblique muscle is supplied by lower six thoracic nerves okay so uh, one more thing is uh, like some other points are present for this muscle like the upper four slips of origin of muscle uh, interdigitate with those of serratus anterior and lower four slips with latissimus dorsi actually this upper four lips are inter like you know uh, they are like interdigitating with serratus anterior above and lower by our latissimus dorsi and the junction of the muscle fibers with aponeurosis lies medial to vertical line drawn from ninth uh, coastal cartilage and uh, below a line joining the anterior superior iliac spine to umbilicus above the ninth coastal cartilage the line curves upwards and medially they are saying about this upwards and medially it is curving like this right and between the anterior and anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle the eponeurosis have free inferior border so this one this is a free inferior border that is folded on itself to form an inguinal ligament actually to fold itself to form an uh, yeah here this one the lower free border forming an inguinal ligament over here the ligament is described uh, about this we'll discuss later so between the linea semilunaris so actually uh, this side will be the linea semilunaris and the linea alba the eponeurosis helps to form a anterior wall of rectus sheet here and just above the pubic crest you can see this is the pubic crest so just above the pubic crest the aponeurosis of external oblique uh, a muscle presents as a triangular aperture called a superficial inguinal ring so here you can really see, clearly see the superficial inguinal ring right and the muscles has free posterior and upper borders so this muscle have a free posterior border and also it is having a free upper border so once let us revise all the all this diagram once again so you can see this is an external oblique muscle right so this uh, upper free border this is the linea alba these are the fleshy fibers of the muscle and this green color represents the aponeurosis of this external oblique muscle and this is the posterior margin which is free and this is the lower free border which is forming an inguinal ligament uh, actually this aponeurosis lower free border only forms an inguinal ligament and you can see this is the intercrural fibers and here is the superficial inguinal ring just above the pubic crest and this is a iliac crest so this is a insertion like this muscle is inserting into the iliac crest it is originating from the as you remember it is arising from eight fleshy slips of uh, middle of shaft of lower eight ribs so it is coming from uh, lower of uh, shaft of middle of lower eight ribs so it is coming from eight ribs uh, lower eight ribs that is its origin okay and its insertion most of the muscle uh, they form aponeurosis and get inserted into the skiffy process above you know you can see here this is a skiffy process 
so to the skiffoid process it will go and insert and also to the linear alba clearly you can see the linear alba here right and also to the pubic symphysis and pubic crest here is the pubic symphysis right here will be the pubic symphysis and of course you can see clearly the pubic crest and also the pectineal line of pubis here it will be over here so this is all about external oblique so now let us discuss about the internal oblique so if you see it's also like a flat muscle right so this muscle is having origin from <coughs> lateral two-thirds of inguinal ligament so where is inguinal ligament here so origin is from uh, lateral two-thirds of inguinal ligament and also from anterior two-thirds of intermediate area of iliac crest so here <coughs> anterior two-thirds of intermediate area of iliac crest okay anterior two-thirds iliac crest okay and next from the thoracolumbar fascia which is over here this one. so this muscle is having three origins one from inguinal ligament one from iliac crest one is from thoracolumbar fascia okay so from this origin the fibers are running upwards forwards medially crossing the fibers of external oblique muscle at right angles so after crossing this muscle they are getting inserted into the uppermost fibers which are inserted directly into lower three four ribs so they are attaching to the ribs lower three uh, what they are saying attached to lower three or four ribs so you can see here seven nine eleven these are the rib numbers so for the ribs they are going in inserting okay along with the cartilages so the greater part of the muscle ends in an aponeurosis through which it is inserted into 7th 9th uh, 7th 9th 8th like that uh, coastal cartilages right <coughs> the skiffoid process uh, and also to let us to the skiffoid process uh, linear alba right and also to pubic crest and pectineal line so here we'll have the pubic crest and here we'll have pectineal line so this is a pubic crest over here pectineal line right and that's it so this is its insertion so what is the nerve supply the nerve uh, which supplies is the lower six thoracic nerves and first lumbar vertebra so lower six thoracic nerves are nothing but like t7 to t12 plus l1 So even for external oblique you can write here, uh, now supply is T7 to T12, here no lumbar, okay, only thoracic, T7 to T12, external oblique, coming to internal oblique, T7 to T12 and also involving L1. So some other points like the junction of muscle fibers with the aponeurosis is roughly at the lateral border of uh, rectus abdominis muscle. And the aponeurosis uh, take part in formation of rectus sheet and up to the lateral margin of uh, rectus abdominis the aponeurosis has only one layer and thereafter the arrangement of aponeurosis differ in upper part and also in lower part so below the level of midway between umbilicus here below the level midway the pubic symphysis aponeurosis remains as a single layer and it passes in front of rectus abdominis uh, mainly to reach the <coughs> A linea alba and it thus takes a part in forming anterior wall of rectus sheet okay so this is uh, this uh, aponeurosis of internal oblique is forming anterior wall of rectus sheet and also lateral part of rectus uh, sheet right and above this level the aponeurosis is split into anterior lamina and that passes medially in front of rectus abdominis and the posterior lamina lies behind the rectus so posterior lamina ends below at the level midway between umbilicus and also pubic symphysis in a free curved margin called arcuate line so here in the arcuate line also called linea semi circularis or folus douglas the line is concave downwards so here the posterior lamina ends the conjoint tendon is formed partly by this muscle also you can see the conjoint tendon and even the cremasteric muscle is formed from internal oblique so once again finally let us uh, look at this diagram so you can see here the 7 9 11 ribs for that it is getting insertion 
टू स्किफर्ड प्रोसेस ऑल्सो इन सेशन राइट टू लिनियर बा ऑल्सो इन सेशन आई कैन सी द फ्लैशी पार्ट दिस इज एपोन्यूरोसिस सो दिस इज एन आर्क्यूरेट लाइन विद द पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ एपोन्यूरोसिस विल एंड एंड दिस इज अ कॉन्जॉइन टेंडोन नॉट ओनली कॉन्जॉइन टेंडोन इवन द क्रेमास्टेरिक मजल इज फॉर्म बाय दिस इंटरनल ऑब्लिक मजल and the nerve supply is t7 to t12 plus also lumbar 1 but in the case of external oblique you will not have this lumbar component coming to its origin it has three points of origin one is from inguinal ligament anterior uh, sorry lateral two third of inguinal ligament and also from the anterior two third of iliac crest and also from the thoracolumbar fascia it is getting its origin so if you see its origin it's opposite to the external oblique because in the case of external oblique the origin is from ribs and the insertion is into this points right but here for the internal oblique the insertion uh, so origin is from this area and the insertion is into the ribs right so this thing you can differentiate between external and internal oblique and by the nerve supply also you can differentiate that the, here l1 is involved but there only the t7 to t12 now it's time to discuss about the one more flat muscle that is transverse abdominus so mainly in this video today we are going to cover about flat muscles so we have completed external oblique internal oblique now we are talking about transverse abdominus muscle so the transverse abdominus muscle have a fleshy origin from lateral one third of inguinal ligament and also from anterior two thirds of inner lip of uh, iliac crest and also from thoracolumbar fascia if you see its origin it's like similar to the internal oblique muscle and also its origin is from inner surface of lower six costal cartilages so lower six costal cartilages and the fibers are directed horizontally forwards so all this are giving origin so you can uh, underline them inguinal ligament thoracolumbar fascia iliac crest okay and also from this uh, lower spines so sorry lower costal cartilage so all this are giving origin to the uh, transverse abdominus muscle so now this muscle and end in a broad aponeurosis which is inserted to scaphoid process and also to the linea alba and also to the pubic crest so pubic crest will be here right so for all this it will go and insert so what is uh, and also it will insert slowest fibers of the muscle with the lowest fibers of internal oblique uh, they form a conjoint tendon yeah so same like internal oblique it will also form a conjoint tendon right and next coming to nerve supply so it is supplied by lower six thoracic nerves and first lumbar nerve so its nerve supply also similar to our uh, you know plus l1 so its nerve supply is also similar to internal oblique muscle so this is about transverse abdominus now let us see what are the some other points like uh, the aponeurosis of this transverse abdominus take part in forming rectus sheet same like internal oblique so above the level of arcuate line you can see this is arcuate line so above the level of arcuate line uh, the aponeurosis pass medially behind the rectus uh, femoris muscle sorry rectus abdominus muscle along with posterior lamina of internal oblique aponeurosis so the lower edge of this part of aponeurosis helps to form the uh, arcuate line here in the uppermost part some fleshy fibers of transverse abdominus lie behind rectus abdominis and below the level of arcuate line the aponeurosis pass in front of rectus abdominis and help to form anterior wall of rectus sheet so it is taking part in you can see anterior wall of rectus sheet whereas internal oblique take part in both anterior and also the lateral wall of uh, rectus sheet next coming to neurovascular plane of abdominal wall it lies between the internal oblique and transverse muscles so this plane is continuous with neurovascular uh, uh, structures of thoracic wall so various nerves vessels run in this place next coming to aponeurosis of three flat muscles seen and in a fibrous raphe that is in the linea alba yeah if you see the linea alba it's a common point of uh, insertion for all the three muscles of flat muscles that is external oblique internal oblique and also for the transverse abdominus muscle so each aponeurosis is made up of two lamina that is superficial and deep lamina the lamina of two sides interdigitate in a manner that the superficial lamina gets continuous with deep lamina of opposite side so this provides enough strength to anterior abdominal wall so actually the superficial and deep lamina continuous and they are providing enough strength to the anterior abdominal wall so by this we have completed the flat muscles so next we'll start with the vertical muscles like rectus abdominis and also you have pyramidalis right pyramidalis rectus abdominis these are the flat muscles like uh, vertical muscles of 
एंटीरियर डोमिनल वॉल